Hello and welcome to 10.5 notes, our last set of notes for chapter 10. So today we're going to be learning about circumference and arc lengths. Our objectives, you will be able to use circumference of circles to solve problems and able to find the length of an arc. So to find the circumference of a circle, you have two different equations you can use. You can use c equals 2 pi r or you can use c equals um, d pi. And so what these stand for, so r is still the radius, right? We've been working with the area and we have pi r squared. So this is different. r squared and 2r are two different things. This is r times r, where this is r. Alright, and so we have the radius or we can use the diameter. All right, and so pretty much what this is saying, if you are given the radius, you have to make sure you multiply it by two before you put the pi next to it because we are using the diameter um, distance. So you have the diameter, or if you're given the radius, just make sure you multiply it by two to find what you're looking for. All right, so find the circumference for each circle shown. Write your answers in terms of pi. So we just want to leave pi there. So we're trying to find the circumference. So remember, the circumference is different than the area. The area formula finds everything on the inside. The circumference formula finds the distance all the way around. Okay, it's sort of like if you take a string and you put it around and then you measure the string for how long or how wide whatever circular figure you're finding. All right, so we have the radius. So I'm going to do 2 pi times 14. So the circumference 2 pi r. And so c equals 28 pi meters. And so we aren't doing meters squared because it is not area. So area is the one that's squared. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number two. So this is 12. So I now have 12 pi. So I have d pi. And we don't have to do anything further than that. So all I'm just going to do is put inches. All right, so for problems like these, there's definitely many ways you can think about doing it and depending on which equation you're more comfortable with. So if you like d pi and you're like, okay, well, I have 14, so this is also 14, and you figure out this is 28, and then you just do 28 pi, that's fine. Or maybe you're given the diameter and you're like, well, I like using 2 pi r, and so you're like, okay, if I cut that in half, my radius is 6, and then you do 6 times 2 to get 12. Um, whichever way you're most comfortable doing it, you're still going to get the same result. All right. Um, a circle has a circumference of 36 pi inches. Find the area. So it's giving us the circumference, and we want to find the area. So we want to make sure we know the difference. The area equals pi r squared, and the circumference is 2 pi r, or d pi. Um, since we are trying to go to the radius, I'm going to, or sorry, not the radius. Since we're trying to find the area, I'm going to stick with trying to find the radius because they have radius in common in both of these problems. So if I use the circumference to find the radius, I can then plug it in to find the area. So it tells me that the circumference is 36 pi. So I'm going to say 36 pi is equal to 2 pi r. So let's go ahead and divide by 2 pi, because we're trying to get r by itself. Divide by 2 pi. So that cancels over here on the left. Or sorry, not the left, the right. Uh, the pi does cancel out on the left, but then we have 36 divided by 2, which is 18. And that is my radius. So now that I have figured out my radius, I can go ahead and plug it in to find the area. So pi times 18 squared. So I'm going to get the area equals 324 pi inches squared. So this one is inches squared because the area, the units are squared. 
All right. So I want you guys to go ahead and try number four. It's the exact same thing we just did with number three, so you can use that as a reference, um, except for we just have a different number. So we're using 12 instead of 36. All right, go ahead and pause the video. Try this one out. All right, there's number four. Let me zoom in a little bit. So we have the circumference. Use the circumference to find the radius, and then plug it in to find area. All right, let's go ahead and go to the next page. So let's talk about length of an arc. The length of an arc is a distance of the curve between two points on the circle. It is part of the circumference of a circle. So it's only part of it. If we see here, the arc length, it's just part of the entire circle. Note, the length of an arc is not the same as the measure of an arc. So this is very important because there is a difference between trying to find the length of the arc and then the measure of the arc um, between the two different equations that we learned in 10.4 compared to 10.5. Alright, and so this, the equations are set up very similarly. If you look here, the length of an arc, arc length, can be found by finding a fraction of the circumference of a circle. So it's m over 360 times the circumference of a circle. Um, so if we see, compared to our last equation, the only thing changes is the 2 pi r, or if you're using d pi, um, either one, where last time we found the area of the sector. So pay attention, really pay attention to the wording. So right now we are um, doing arc length, so we are going to be using these problems. But if you're looking at something like maybe the review or the test or maybe a quiz, um, really pay attention to what the question is asking you. So arc length, we use the circumference. If it's asking for the arc, the sector area, then you're using the area formula. So if you ever see the word area, that's when you know you're going to use the area formula um, with the m over 360. Um, and the m means the same thing as last time. So the measure of the arc. So measure. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at number four and five. So we're using m over 360 times 2 pi r. So we have the measure as 135 five over 360 times 2 pi times 12. And remember, if we were to change these into fractions, we do just multiply straight across, which means from here, we don't have to do too much extra work. We can just plug this all into a calculator. So times pi, times 12, all over 360. And for everything in the numerator, since it is all multiplication, if you decided to do 12 times 2 times pi times 135, you definitely could. But we're going to plug this into a calculator. Don't worry about trying to simplify right now. Um, because we're going to plug it into a calculator anyway. We want to find to the nearest tenth. So once we plug that into the calculator, I'm going to find the length of the arc is going to be 28.3. All right, let's go ahead and try that with number five. Okay, so I have the length equals the measure of the arc all over 360 times 2 pi r. So I'm going to have 137 divided by 360 times 2 pi times 7. Okay. And so from here you can just plug it into a calculator, but just so we can see that we do have this fraction, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite it all over 360 so that we can clearly see the numerator and clearly see the denominator. So once we plug that into an equation, I'm going to have the length of the arc is 16.7 millimeters. Alright, so all you need to figure out is the measure 
of the arc, and then use the radius, or if you're given the diameter, you can also use the diameter. Alright, so go ahead and pause the video and try number six and seven. Alright, here's six and seven. Go ahead and take a look at those. You can pause the video again if you need to take a look at the solutions a little bit longer, of course. Alright, well, let's go ahead and check out. Oh, I guess we're doing a second number seven. The next problem, though. An arc has a measure of 90 degrees and a diameter of 16. Find the length of an arc as an exact answer in terms of pi. So our goal is to get our answer in pi. But remember, if we don't have a picture, we need to draw one. Even if your circle is not perfect, as you can see, mine was definitely nowhere near perfect. But have some sort of picture so you know what's going on. So it tells me I have a diameter, right? So the diameter goes to the center, and it's at 16 points. And I'm going to use the line so it's very clear that it's not um, just the radius and then we have an arc measure of 90 degrees so 90 degrees here and we want to find the length of the arc as an exact answer of pi so remember the length equals the measure over 360 times 2 pi r or in this case we can use the diameter so or m over 360 times d pi, all right, so I have 90 all over 360 times 16 pi. So let's go ahead and simplify this problem. Um, since we are keeping in terms of pi, we are going to have to simplify our fraction now, um, or you can, you know, you can just plug this into a calculator as well. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out the zeros. 9 does go into 36 four times. So this is one fourth. So one fourth times 16 pi, and then four goes into 16 four times. So I know that this will be one and this will be four. So we end up with four pi. And that is the um, circumference, the, or sorry, not the circumference, the length of the arc. All right, so this area right here is four pi. Alright, let's go ahead and have you guys try 8. So once again, very similar to the problem we just did. Make sure you draw that picture along with it. Alright, there's number 8. So I simplified my fractions and I left it in terms of pi. So 3 pi was the length of that arc. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at number 9. An arc has a length of 10 pi centimeters and a radius of 27 centimeters. Find the measure of the arc. So let's go ahead and create my equations. We have the length equals m over 360 times 2 pi r. So we did this a lot with the area, right? When we're given the area and we have to recognize we're plugging it in. So we have to recognize what we have here. So it gives us the length, so that's going to go in for L. It gives us the radius, and so that's going to go on for r, and I, and it wants me to find the measure, and so m should be left over because we're that's what we're trying to find. We don't know what that is. So let's go ahead and plug in these values. So I have 10 pi is equal to m over 360 times 2 pi times 20. All right, I'm going to go ahead and set this up as we normally would with um, when we're trying to find the length, right? So I do m times 2 times pi times 20 all over 360. But since I'm trying to find m, my goal now is instead of just plugging this all into a calculator, I need to start moving things over. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and multiply by 360 to both sides. And what that allows me to do is take away the 360. So I now have 3600 pi is equal to m times 2 times pi times 20. Now that we're at a state of all multiplication, I can go ahead and divide by 2 pi and 20. So 2 pi and 20. So now all these terms cancel out running out of room, I'm going to go ahead and move it up here. And the nice thing down here too is pi also cancels. 
So when I go ahead and divide this out, I am going to end up with 90. So 90 equals n. And for that answer, I just plugged it into a calculator. So n, remember, this is 90 degrees. All right. And then, so number 10 is exactly, or once again, similar. It's not exactly, or else we'd have the same numbers. But it's very similar to number 9. So go ahead and try this one out. Set it up. I'll leave number 9 in the picture so you can reference it. Hopefully you have it written down on your paper as well. Go ahead and pause the video and try number 10. All right, and here is number 10. So there's all of the work for it. All right, and that is the end of 10.5, as well as chapter 10 as a whole. So make sure if you have any further questions, please be sure to ask your teacher. Um, Rewatch the video as needed, and have a wonderful rest of your day.